Welcome to Retro Upgrade. Today we'll be looking at the Jabra Evolve 75 again. This time, uh, this uh, particular headset has uh, no battery and it's because of the charging port. So the, these US, micro USB ports break on pretty much everything. Every device I've ever had with one usually breaks after a while. It's super loose, well used. <laughs> Uh, so it needs to be replaced so th the problem with these are uh, normally a usb replacement is quite easy you just get the right type of port that's the hard part actually because there are hundreds and then you just replace it the all these actually have the same issue okay so let's do some uh, investigation and check if the port is actually damaged and actually it looks Okay, usually the part inside, the plastic part, breaks off. Uh, sorry for the shaky cam. It's really hard with the microscope to keep something still. So, when I put in the analyzer for the USB, it didn't show a short or anything. So, it, it's just a broken uh, connector. And because it's so loose, it's not centering the pins correctly, I'm guessing. So time to disassemble. If you want a more complete guide on disassembly, watch the Jabra Evolved microphone fix. But there is a small screw, a Torx 4 here. I left the screw there. You need to wedge it up. So put pressure down and forward at the same time so you can get those off. These are Torx 8 screws, the rest of them. You actually need to remove all of the screws this time. Uh, last time you just needed to remove uh, three of them uh, to remove the back cover, but we need to actually remove everything to get to the port, which is a pain because uh, you need to remove the plastic far away enough from the port so you can uh, use a hot air gun or uh, your soldering iron without melting the plastic around. And still you can manage to melt it. So just remove all the seven screws. There are four inset screws. Uh, th those hold the microphone in place. And th then you have uh, three screws on the actual plastic. And they are actually just holding the back cover I took off there. So you need to unclip. Uh, the small connector first. So this ribbon here. The ribbon is a latch uh, system. Uh, with So you, you need to lift the back white part of the latch. So you can get it out. I can't remember if I removed this on my last video. So I'm showing it in detail just in case. I'm using some pair of tweezers to lift up the back. Be careful, these are quite delicate and break really easily. Then just pull out the cable. Be careful so you don't rip this cable because this is the mute uh, sensor pretty much. So it, it no, uh, that's the one that tells the, it if it's up or down the mic. Okay, now time to remove this. So this looks really hard. It clicks off quite easily. Uh, the problem is uh, you see the foam in the middle. It's actually glued down to the PCB as well. So we need to rip it up once and then it lets go. I usually don't put uh, too much force up uh, so I don't break it in half. So uh, this plastic piece is actually not very needed, really. <laughs> it's just there to have some uh, guidance hole for the screws. I'm just removing a little bit of this foam. See if I can reduce the adhesive. As you can see, the PCB is actually out. Now, we need to remove the microphone wires uh, so I can remove the board from inside. And the microphone is actually damaged like all the others. See the last video on the Evolve if you want to see how to fix that properly. I I do my, uh, fix it on this video as well, but I uh, just gloss over it fast. But you need to remove it, so there we go. 
and as you can see yep the sheeting is broken and uh, it's just a matter of time before the actual microphone stops working because it rubs uh, in the hole on the side and then it shorts out uh, the two wires now we have the board loose but we can't take it out completely because of uh, one thing all those wires on the top there so th those wires are hard to do okay so i have these ports at hand uh, they look fairly similar but uh, i noticed after a while after faffing around <laughs> with this connector that flew around all over the place that uh, mine are more suited for uh, surface mount protect all the buttons and all the plastic parts with uh, some aluminium tape or captain tape i was just showing the cheaper alternative put some flux on the joints you're going to remove this is the usb port obviously on the bottom side and then on the top as well on the pins you could uh, also put some fresh solder so it melts off easier so just heat it up this took a while uh, don't be fooled by the video <laughs> took a while to heat up i'm using 400 c on the machine so it's about 300 and something this video is sponsored by PCBWay. At PCBWay, they specialize in providing high quality printed circuit boards, PCBs, for a variety of applications, from 3D printing to sheet metal fabrication. Their state of the art equipment and experience team ensures precise and reliable results. They understand the importance of quality and affordability when it comes to your PCB needs. That's why they're offering a special deal Get 10 PCBs for $5. Your PCBs are made with only the finest materials and built to last. With their expertise and dedication to customer satisfaction, you can trust PCBWay for all your PCB needs. So don't wait any longer. Visit PCBWay today and start ordering your next project with confidence. Use the link in the video description below. Order now and start creating. Now back to the video. Okay, it's time for some cleanup. Use a lot of flux here and a uh, high quality braid. Do not use the cheap kind. Unfortunately, those stick and uh, yeah, destroy your PCB. I'm trying to clear out the holes here and that works quite well. You could use a solder sucker if you had one. That also works. Just making sure everything is nice and clean. So I can put on the new port as flat as I can because my port is not exactly the same. Uh, it is a lot more fiddly than it should be because otherwise just clear out the holes and put the ports in with the small latches and they keep it in place. You can see the small protrusions on the bottom to the, uh, on the port to the left. Mine is missing those. Uh, it's more flat, but this wor still works though. So those are the protrusions, I mean. So those keep the port in place. So I did find a replacement that looks to be the same. I'll put a link in the description. But I don't have those at hand. So I start by filling up the hole because the port is not correct. The pins are correctly placed. Now uh, I put on some flux uh, and uh, fill the hole completely. Now what I do is I melt the puddle and push the port in with my tweezers or fingers and uh, try to center it as well as I can on the pads, the actual connectors back. You need a microscope for this because there is so little space be behind the port, as you can see. There, there is no way really for you to do this otherwise. Uh, the port is almost there needs to go a little bit to the right so again melt let go and one of the pins seem to be bent the most uh, leftmost one so i'm just going to angle this a little bit differently now some more flux without touching the port and just melting the puddle i'm going to try to get it to stick to the housing without actually melting the connector inside because if you use hot air uh, doing this you can melt the connector inside and that will eventually suck 
So I repeat for the other side. That's not hard at all because it's stationary now. So you just heat it up. I'm using a curved tip, but actually a wedge tip would be a lot better for this. But for the back, I couldn't reach with the wedge tip. So uh, one thing people are afraid of when uh, doing soldering for the first time or so is bridging pins. As long as you don't uh, power up the device with, uh, let's say, the USB cord while it's bridged like that, there is no issue because you can fix it with a lot of flux and some braid. So because I can't reach down there, uh, the component on the top right is actually blocking me from getting the solder uh, soldering iron in. But uh, considering I have a curved tip, it's easier to get it in. But if you have a normal, let's say, uh, conical tip, this will be quite a challenge. Uh, I was using too low of a heat. 350 was too low there, so I, I bumped it up to 400. And uh, it seemed to melt the solder a lot better. I put some more flux and did this just to get the pins well flooded. No, that looks good, but there are bridges. So let's get some wick and just wick off the excess. This took multiple tries. Uh, the video I just showed the successful so successful one. Sorry. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this is job done. I used a pair of twe uh, needle nose tweezers to actually test uh, all the connections and it seemed fine. And the light comes on. So that's the best indicator actually that it works. Uh, and the connector is not loose, so that means the internal plastic pieces didn't melt too much. Time for reassembly. I made new wires, just like I did in the previous video, to mitigate the problem with the fraying wires there. I just gloss over this because I already have a video on this. Putting back this, screwing back everything together. Uh, just reconnecting the little sensor for the mute. Now I need to spread out these wires and uh, separate them. Like I said, last video has more information on this. And the microphone is actually quite hard to get in place the first time. Uh, I noticed that the wire would be strained there, so I moved the little PCB I made. So it's not struggling that much. Now just screw it back together. I removed the, the glue, don't worry. <laughs> Off camera, of course. And now to get this to hook in and the screw back in on the side. This is a little bit fiddly, but it goes on. Now, moment of truth. Plug it in again. Because I'm watching through the camera when I'm recording, uh, <laughs> I missed. <laughs> so don't worry, it, it does work and it does fit. And uh, I have actually fully charged these and tested them out, even microphone, and they work perfectly now. Uh, so thanks a lot for watching until then. Subscribe and like the video if you liked it and if it helps you out. Have a nice one then. until next time. Bye. Chabara Info Now all I get is failure Chabara Info Left me in despair here Chabara Info But the headset dies again Chabara